Good morning, learners. Welcome to another interesting science lesson. On the previous discussion, you've learned that the different movements of plates create different ge uh, geologic processes. But how does the scientist come up with this idea? Well, that is what we are going to find out in today's discussion. At the end of my lesson, you are expected to attain the following objectives. First, you are expected to describe and re uh, reconstruct Pangaea. Second, state Wegener's continental drift theory. Let us first know who is Alfred Lothar Wegener. So Alfred Wegener is a German meteorologist. Since he is a German, his surname is pronounced as Wegener. Can you repeat it? Can you say Wegener? All right, good job. So Alfred Wegener is expert in climate and weather of the polar regions. He took part in an expedition to Greenland and he pioneered the use of balloon to track polar air circulation. Alfred Wegener was also a professor of meteorology and geophysics. Now, in 1910, while looking at the map of the world, Alfred Wegener noticed that the continents of South America and Africa seemed to fit with each other. This gave him an idea that all of the continents were once joined together. This theory is called the Continental Drift Theory. According to the Continental Drift Theory of Alfred Wegener, there is a supercontinent named Pangaea, which means all Earth. Pangaea drifted into two smaller supercontinents, namely Gondwana Land and Laurasia. Gondwana Land started to break apart, forming South America, Africa, and Antarctica. Now, Laurasia drifted and broke apart, forming North America and Eurasia. The, the drifting and breaking up of the continents continued up to the present time that we have now the seven major continents of the world. During that time of Wegener, the um, scientific community did not accept his theory. And according to scientists before, the matching of the edges of the continents were just a coincidence. But does that not make Wegener to stop looking for other evidences to prove the continental drift theory. So Alfred Wegener continued looking for evidences to support the theory of the drifting of the continents. Now, aside from the continental jigsaw puzzle or the matching up of the edges of the continent, Alfred Wegener noticed that large uh, geological features such as mountain ranges seem to match up when the continents are uh, put together. On this example, you can see here the Appalachian Mountain in the North America here and the Caledonian Mountain. When they are brought together, it seems like they are just one long mountain range. And on continuous research, Alfred Wegener found out that these two different mountain ranges have the same mineral components and have the same type and age of rocks. Now, another important evidence that supports continental drift theory are the fossil rele uh, relevance. Fossils are remains and tra uh, traces of organisms. Alfred Wegener studied different fossils of organisms, and he found out that there are similar fossils of animals and plants that are found on different locations in different continents. Now, let us discuss the different fossil evidences uh, discovered by Alfred Wegener. First are the Mesosaurus reptile. Uh, fossils of Mesosaurus are found in different continents. Mesosaurus are freshwater reptiles, just like the modern crocodile that we have today. Mesosaurus can swim by propelling itself using its legs and its tail. So Mesosaurus are found in the continents of South America and Africa. Now, is it possible that this Mesosaurus swim across the Atlantic Ocean and travel from one continent to another? Of course not. 
uh, if the continent of South America and Africa is, is still in its present position during the time of Mesosaurus, well, pro, uh, well definitely the Mesosaurus, uh, is it impossible for the Mesosaurus to travel from these two continents and move across the Atlantic Ocean? Now, another fossil records is the fossil record of Cynognitus. Cynognitus are mammal-like reptiles. And the fossils of this reptile are found also in South America and Africa. Same with Mesosaurus. Cynognitus could not migrate from one continent to another and cross the Atlantic Ocean. Cynognitus are land-dominant reptiles, so it cannot migrate or swim over the Atlantic Ocean. Third fossil evidence is the Listosaurus. Listosaurus are found in the continents of Africa. It is also found in India and Australia. So similar with the two other fossils or animals, Listosaurus could not migrate or could not travel from one continent to another. So these are important fossil evidence of animals that Wegener have discovered. Another fossil evidence are the fossil records of Glossopteris plants. Glossopteris are known to be woody, seed-bearing trees. It has a tongue-shaped leaves and could grow up to 30 meters tall. Glossopteris plants are found at the continents of South America, Africa, India, Australia, and Antarctica. Glossopteris seeds are bulky. It is big and could not be flown from one continent to another. So how come that there are Glossopteris plants on different continents of the world? Aside from that, Glossopteris are found in Antarctica. And we all know that Antarctica is covered with ice. Glossopteris fossils are found at the northeastern part of Antarctica in which, uh, in a latitude at which there is no sunlight for half a year. So how come that this Glossopteris plant, uh, that there are fossils of Glossopteris plant on this area? So because of this, it, uh, this gives Wegner an idea that Antarctica was not covered with ice during the time that Glossopteris plant grow in that continent. So, according to Alfred Wegener, uh, Antarctica was once located in a location where it can grow plants and can sustain substantial amount of life. Another, posit, uh, another record or another evidence are the coal deposits. There are large amount of coal deposits that is found on that are found on uh, Antarctica coals are formed these coals are formed when dead plants are buried and because of heat and extreme pressure these dead plants are are converted into coal now these coals are different with the uling uh, that we we have in the market so these coals are natural resource that can be used as source of energy so uh, as Wegner looked for evidences, he found out that there are widespread amount of coal deposit in the Transantarctic Mountains in Antarctica. Remember, Antarctica is covered with ice. So how come that there are large amount of coal deposit in that area? So if there are large amount of coal deposit in that area, so there is a point that Antarctic were able to support or sustain substantial amount of life. That gives Alfred Wegener an idea that once Antarctica was not covered with ice, but is full of swamp or full of large plants and have uh, many numbers of plants and animals. Now, according to Wegener, maybe Antarctica was not located in Pole, but it is somewhere located near the equator. So, because of those evidences, Alfred Wegener wrote a book entitled The Origin of the Continents and Ocean. At this book, he wrote that all of the Earth's continents were once part of a single landmass 
called Pangea. But during that time, scientists rejected Alfred Wegener's theory. Why did the scientists reject the theory despite of the evidences that Alfred Wegener uh, have proposed? First is because Alfred Wegener mentioned that the continent, uh, continental motion is about 250 centimeter per year. So this is unbelievable. Next, he cannot explain what causes the continents to move. So the, the scientists are keep on asking what causes the drifting of the continent. And Alfred Wegener could not give possible reason why these continents are moving. So because of that, Alfred Wegener go back to his expedition to Greenland. And in 1930, the dead body of Alfred Wegener was found and he was last seen delivering goods to his fellow researchers. And continental drift theory was accepted uh, years after the death of Alfred Wegener. So to sum up our discussion for today, continental drift theory of Alfred Wegener states that continents were all connected into a single landmass. And this single landmass is called Pangea. Pangea means all Earth. Pangea drifted into two supercontinents, namely Laurasia. This is, these are the continents that are found in the northern hemisphere of the Earth, and Gondwana land. Gondwana land includes the continents that are found in the southern hemisphere of the Earth. This Laurasia and Gondwana land continue to drift and separate, forming the present continents that we have today. To prove the theory of continental drift, Alfred Wegener provides evidences. First is a continental jigsaw puzzle. The continental jigsaw puzzle explain or propose that the edges of the continents are just uh, are like puzzle pieces so they fit together second evidence are the matching of rocks so according to alfred wegener rocks of different there are rocks found on different continents that match with each other just like the rocks that are found in africa and south america next evidence are the fossil evidences so wegener provide different fossil evidence of animals such as the Mesosaurus, a uh, freshwater reptile, the Lystrosaurus, Cynognathus, and a plant fossil, Glossopteris. Next evidence are the coal deposit. Coal are uh, buried dead plants that are found in Antarctica. So large amount of coal deposit are found in uh, Antarctica that gives Wegener an idea that Antarctica was not located before in the polar region, but was located somewhere near the equator. Now, this evidence supports the continental drift theory of Alfred Wegener. So I hope that you have learned something on our discussion today of the continental drift theory. And I am now going to open the comment section for your questions. So the... Moderator are choosing only three questions to be entertained today. So I think the moderator already have questions. Already chose questions from the comment section. So allow me to read the first question. First question, what evidence of continental drift can prove that the climate of the continent changes? Again, let me read again the question. What evidence of continental drift can prove that the climate of the continent changes? Well, the best evidence that can prove that the climate of the continent changes, that the climate of the continents changes, are the fossil evidences, specifically the fossils of the Glossopteris plants. Remember that Glossopteris plants are found in Antarctica, wherein uh, we all know that Antarctica is covered with ice. So, for, uh, for Antarctica to grow and to sustain substantial amount of life, it must have been located somewhere near the equator and its climate must be temperate to support or to grow this glossopteris uh, plant. 
Next question is coming from student of Malinta National High School. His question, is there a possibility that the current location of the continent would be different after hundreds of years from now? Again, his question, is there a possibility that the current location of the continents would be different after hundreds of years from now? Well, according to researches, there is a possibility that the location that the location of the continent would change after hundreds of years. Remember that the continents are still are continuously moving at a rate of 2 cm per year. And best example of this is the continent of Australia. According to record, the continent of Australia uh, already moved towards north for about 1.5 cm for the past 22 years. So there is a record of movement of the continent of Australia. And this made Australia out of sync of the global positioning system or the GPS. So next question. Third question. Will there be another supercontinent? So there are articles about the future supercontinent since the continents are in continuous movement. So according to this article, there is a possibility that there will be another supercontinent. And the formation of this supercontinent is linked to the formation of Pangaea and is also linked to the movements of the continents. So those are the three questions that I am going to answer in, this, in today's discussion. I hope you have learned something on our discussion today. Thank you very much and see you on our next live discussion.